Hello everyone, and thank you again for coming. Uh, as Elizabeth said, my name is Duncan Wilson, I'm a lecturer here, and I am the incoming programme director for our long-standing degree in the history of science, technology and medicine. I think before I talk about the degree specifics, I'll just give you a bit of an overview of what this degree is and what it does. So, pretty much does what it says on the tin. This is a degree that looks at the integrated history of science, technology, and medicine over really we concentrate on the modern period, so the past two, two and a half centuries. But it's very much a social and a cultural history as well. So we look not just at the integrated history of science, technology, and medicine, but how they become integral to the ways in which we experience, order, and imagine modern society, both in the West and beyond. So we look at how in science, technology, and medicine have become instruments of political diplomacy, of economic development, political propaganda, moral judgment, and cultural difference. And in taking the histories up to the present day, we hope to give you, the students, just a fresh, fresh and critical perspective on things that are pressing issues today. So things like our treatment of the natural world more broadly, climate change. Um, patient and health activism and declining trust in, in expertise seen in things like vaccination and anti-vaccination campaigns, uh, the emergence of bioethics and moral debates over things like stem cells, and the relationships between information technology and society. Um, and so that's a very broad overview, and I'll, I'll start, like Elizabeth, by giving you a bit of background um, as to who the sorts of people who come to do our degrees are and the jobs that they go on to. So we're a unique degree in a way that we're really interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary in our student cohort. So we have students who come both nationally and internationally who have backgrounds in science, medicine and the humanities. So history, anthropology, sociology. And people who take the degree go on to have jobs, careers in different sectors. And this is just a snapshot from some of our recent graduates. So um, one of our students from two years ago who I supervised now works in Heritage. He works for Historic England. Um, we have had several graduates who've gone on to have very successful careers in the civil service. So this is a good degree if you're interested in policy and policy history. Um, most notably, one of, our, one of our students now works in a very senior position in the cabinet office. Um, academia, of course, lots of our graduates take the degree because they want academic careers and go on to have academic careers. So we have a research fellow in, in, in the science and religion, the history of science and religion in Birmingham. Um, people go into the museum sectors, creative technology and engineering in the Science Museum in London. Lots of people go on to have careers in libraries and archiving as well. And here's one of our international students who went back to the States and has a good job in New York. Um, some of our, our, our graduates going further back have gone on to have very senior careers. So this is a, a, a graduate from around about the time um, I first came here, who now is head of department, was head of department at King's College in London, and people also go into, into public outreach. One name I've missed off the list, one position I've missed off the list here, is lecturer in system and program director for the history <laughs> of science, technology, and medicine, because I am a former graduate myself. So a lot of what I say, I'm, I'm actually speaking as the programme director and as someone who's taken this degree. And I'll talk a bit about my experience as we go along as well. Um, so this is a programme structure for full-time students. So I'll talk about part-time in a minute. So you'll see some of these things overlap. So what we do in the first semester is we start with the big overview course. So we call this Major Themes in the History of Science, Technology and Medicine, which runs for the whole of the first semester and looks at big issues, what are the big issues in the history of these fields? So we look at things like the emergence of science as a profession, as a form of expertise. We look at ideas about trust, the rise in trust, decline in trust. Um, and we're shaking this course up a bit this year and we're changing around and we're, we're really focusing on issues that have relevance for students today. So people like you today, the sorts of things that you're interested in. So we're looking at expertise, we're looking at environment, we're looking at issues about eugenics and race science, because of course that's in the news again. Um, and so the 10, 11 big subjects that we look at in this module is taught by staff across the department. So in taking this, you'll get to know who everyone is and what they work on. So it's an introduction to the field 
and it's an introduction to our centre as well. Everybody takes communicating ideas, as Elizabeth said in the first half of semester one, and then everyone on the HSTM programme does what we call a historiography module. And that's basically just different ways of working, of conceptualising the history of science. So what we call historiography, different theoretical and practical models. In semester two this year, we've changed it up. We've completely changed what we offer in semester two. So in previous years, you would have got your credits by selecting two from three modules. What we've done this year and what we're really excited by is we've introduced a whole new range of options that are much more um, relevant to what we think people are interested in today and give the degree a lot more flexibility. And I'll talk about these all um, in a minute, but we have a course on decolonizing history of science, the politics of public health, a history of biology, which I run, so making life, technology, identity and society, a course that Elizabeth will be running on ideas about risk, the Nuclear Age, a course on the history of psychiatry and mental health, and a course on ideas about the environment since 1800. And this all new module that we were, were setting up, which is a placement, where, we, where you get the chance to work with external partners. And I'll talk about that in a minute as well. And the big thing in the summer for HSTM is this research dissertation, which is a substantial piece of original, largely independent work where you'll pair up with a supervisor from our staff working between sort of June through to September. So, part-time, like science communication, you split over two years. The first year, semester of year one, you'll do major themes, and then you'll take any two of the 15 credit options. Um, oh, sorry, I, I should say, going back, so to here, you get to pick four of these eight new modules to get 60 credits, or you can take two and take the placement option, which is 30 credits. Uh, so, part-time you do two, or the placement, and then in year two you do two again, or the placement there. In semester three you do communicating ideas and historiography, you get the summer off in the year if you're doing it part-time, and then in the summer of year two you would do the research dissertation. So, are all new options modules? Just tell you a bit more about them in depth. The first one that we're offering, as you can see here, is this, this new module on decolonizing the history of science, which will be offered and taught by our, our director, Pratik Chakrabarti, which basically asks the very important question of, is science white? Is science Eurocentric? And is the history of science Eurocentric? It introduces students to ideas in global health, global history of science, and looks at decolonizing, whether we can truly decolonize both history of science uh, and science. The second option is Making Life, which is a unit I, I am running, which is basically an introduction to schools of thought in biological science from around 1800 through to Darwin, through to the present day, and genetic engineering, things like CRISPR. Nuclear Age is what it says on the tin. It's a history of nuclear research, nuclear power, public attitudes to nuclear technology, starting roughly with the Second World War with Hiroshima and Nagasaki and going through to the present day. Risk, science, society and culture is ideas about risk in science and society. So what are the emergent ideas about risk? How are they operationalized in science and medicine? And how, do they, how are they shaped by and how do they impact on public attitudes to risk as well? Madness and Society is a very popular undergraduate module we run that we're now offering at master's level, which is essentially a history of changing understandings of mental illness since 1800 uh, through to the present day that looks as well at how history is impacted on current day debates about mental health and mental illness. Nature and Artifice is run by our colleague uh, Vladimir Yankovic and looks at changing schools of environmental thought since the early 19th century, which is really the period in which the idea of the environment gets invented, running through to current day debates on climate change and the Anthropocene. Politics of public health looks at how public health provision is inherently political. So struggles over access to public health, both in the West and more globally, um, so things like health for all. Um, technology, identity and society is offered by our, my colleague James Sumner, which looks at technology and nation building. So how technology is integral to social formations and really scrutinizes this idea of the politics of technology. 
And then the new placement module, uh, which I'm the convener for, we're really excited by this because it, 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 it gives students for the first time the chance to gain real practical skills. So those students who aren't necessarily interested in, in a purely academic career, who want to go on to work in heritage, who want to go on to work in museums, for the first time can go and work for a whole semester with charities, heritage, museums, schools, um, various people we're pairing up with to gain the transferable and the practical skills that they want. So you don't just put on your CV, MSc in the History of Science, Technology and Medicine, you can put work that you've done during the course of semester two with the placement. And it's a bit like the mentored project, so you're given a project brief, not making tea or coffee, it's, a, it's, it's something that we work out in advance with, with the placement um, organisation, external partner, and you go and you work on that for a minimum of 20 days across the semester. Um, and then you and them have you have a practical impact, whether it's doing an archive, working with an outreach, working on a website, working on Twitter, doing work with schools, um, cataloguing. And then you, you write an essay basically reflecting on your experience there. So those are all the new uh, range of, of modules we're offering for the first time this year, which as I said, we're really excited. The research dissertation is the, the culmination of your degree, um, which is the thing, when I, when I did my degree, it was the thing I enjoyed the most, because it's the chance you've worked and you've learned from colleagues, this is your chance to work with them on a topic of your choice, and you have the whole, the whole summer to go and, and do research. Um, I did my dissertation many years ago on uh, the ethics of informed consent and large-scale genetic biobanking. Um, so it's whatever you're interested in, what do you really want to get your teeth into? Uh, you spend the whole summer doing this. And, it, and it's the thing about our degree our students often tend to enjoy it the most. And recent titles include, as you can see, sort of um, a history of negative representations of the telegraph. So that's someone who is interested in the history of information technology, who's in fact now doing a PhD here. Um, an analysis is of um, electroencephalography, from research laboratories to clinic clinical applications. I don't know I've got that one down because it's hard to read. Um, standardizing diagnosis um, in post-colonial contexts. So this was a brilliant dissertation I supervised, which looks at whether there's a one-size-fits-all standardized diagnosis in psychiatry, whether they can be applied um, equally to people from different racial backgrounds. Gender and the radical science movement in the 1960s. And then another dissertation I, I supervised on the uh, politics of um, architecture and the construction of the medical school here in Manchester and how that was an inherently political and remains an inherently political building. So this is just a, a selection of the sort of the range of things that people work on. They're all original and they're all very exciting projects.